Today we're going to take this 3D model from concept to action figure diorama. Vasco Toys, action figure dioramas and props. This is Tinkercad, my favorite 3D modeling software that's cloud-based and free to use. I use Tinkercad to create all of the pieces that appear in the model that you're seeing on the screen. And this model is actually made up of 36 different pieces that I printed out separately and then assembled. In fact, let me show you how this works. So you can actually position your pieces to make sure that they're going to lock into place when you print them. This is my first ever fully 3D printed diorama, and to celebrate that, I am going to be offering the STL on my website for purchase. So if you have a 3D printer and you want to, you can follow along as I build this diorama. There's a wide variety of slicer software that you can use to convert your STL file or your 3D model file into a G code. Now, I personally am a big fan of Prusa Slicer, which is what I'm going to show you guys here and what I used to slice all of the parts for this diorama project. Once you have your STL, you're going to want to add it to your build plate. Once you've done that, your model will appear and you can reposition it so that you can print it the most optimized way possible. For this wall panel piece, that means printing it flat. I'm going to print this on my Ender 3 V2. And then the only setting that I'm going to adjust is the heat of the filament, and that's going to be 220 degrees Celsius. Now it's time to export the G-code and get it printed. Before I do anything, I preheat my bed and my nozzle. This is going to help me when I go to level the bed if all of the components are already heated up. Now we have to level the bed so that we prepare our printer properly to print our object. It's not the most fun thing to do, but a best practice is to level your bed before every print. My printer doesn't have auto leveling, so I have to disable the stepper motor and then adjust manually. And what I'm doing is using a piece of cardstock to measure and gauge the pressure that the nozzle is applying to the bed and how much space is between the bed and the nozzle and i'm doing that by feel and so really i just wanted to feel the same in all four corners of my rectangular print bed if you've never done this before you want to make sure that the nozzle is not going to drag on the print bed because that's going to mess up the quality of your print and it's also going to damage your print bed trust me i've ruined a couple myself what I'm looking for when I do this is just a little bit of friction on the card. I'm able to move the card, but I know that I'm going to get the right amount of space and my filament is going to flow freely. Now that the bed is level and we're all heated up, it's time to pick my file from my SD card. And now the most difficult part, waiting. I mentioned at the beginning of the video that there were 36 pieces that were part of this diorama, which means I had to print all of those pieces. I don't have an exact count, but I would say it took me between 30 and 40 hours to get all of my prints completed. But that is factoring in some problem solving I had to do related to how the pieces fit together and making adjustments after test printing, and also, of course, print failures. All of that to say, as cool as 3D printing dioramas is, you need to make sure that you have patience if you're going to tackle this. Two down, 34 to go. Now, I do have a second printer, but it's much smaller than my printer that I've previously showed. This print bed is 180 millimeters by 180 millimeters, while the other one is 235 by 235. So strategically, I printed the smaller parts on the smaller print bed and the bigger parts on the bigger print bed. Doing this was an added time efficiency for me, but it's not necessary if you don't have two printers. Just in case you're wondering, I do not like to print with supports if I don't have to. So I designed all the pieces in this diorama to be printed without supports. Here's a look at the unpainted diorama after I printed all of the pieces. I'm really happy that everything's fitting together the way that I want, but I definitely want to paint this piece, and I'm going to do that with some Rust-Oleum spray paint as the base. 
Because I was trying to be efficient with my time, I printed the two biggest pieces differently when I did this dial. So the one on the right and the black filament, that was on my bigger printer. The pieces on the left and the gray filament, I did print on my smaller one and I split them in half so that I would have to glue them later on. I'm choosing to use Hotwire Foam Factory Styro Glue as my glue of choice for this project. This is my favorite glue to use with foam, especially when I'm attaching PLA pieces to foam, but it also works to attach PLA pieces to each other. I like it because it tacks up immediately, gives a really good hold, and it's pretty sturdy after about 30 minutes with a full cure after 12 hours. While that's drying, I go ahead and get the other pieces of the dio spray painted using metallic silver on these panel pieces and an ultra matte slate gray for all my grates and vent looking pieces. I also chose to use the same color for the threshold for the door. Unfortunately, I didn't get footage of myself spray painting the doors and I want you guys to know that I used this Krylon Fusion all-in-one paint and primer metallic dark metal which has some texture on it and I feel like it helps kind of hide some of the layer lines that I had in my print and um, honestly I've used this before on some other projects and I really love this stuff. All of the diorama pieces that I printed are now in the color scheme that I envisioned for the diorama. So the next step is going to be to take all these painted pieces and start to assemble them with glue and some other measures. I'm going to start with the floor pieces, which there are two of. So what you guys are seeing me do here, I did twice. I just filmed it once so it wasn't redundant. In the future, I'd like to make it so that these snap together in an interlocking way, but from my first run at my fully printed diorama, I decided not to do that and decided just to stick with gluing, so that's what you see me doing here. As I was doing this, I realized that the glue might seep through the bottom and stick to my mat, so I just went ahead and put a little bit of chipboard underneath this. I'd rather it stick to the chipboard than to my mat. To ensure I was doing a clean job, I went and used a Q-tip just to wipe away some of the excess that was seeping through the top part of this, which is okay because we're going to glue some grates down on this anyway. The grates aren't symmetrical, so I just want to line them up and make sure that I'm gluing them down the same way so it doesn't look funny. After applying the glue, I take my Q-tip again and just smooth everything out to try to get an even coat of this glue. And then it's time just to push these grates down and they should fit right in there. This next part you guys aren't going to have to do because this was a print imperfection that I decided to roll with since this is a prototype. So you'll just start here when we have the grates ready to glue on where I'm doing the same process of smoothing the glue out and then popping those grates in. Make sure you let all the glue pieces dry for at least 30 minutes before you try to move them. While the floor pieces are drying, I'm going to attach the floor pieces of the door threshold to the frame. The doors for this diorama are supposed to be functional, so I need to be really careful and make sure the door lines up in a way that I'll be able to slide it through. To keep myself honest, I'm putting the door in there as I'm gluing these in place and making sure that it's going to work properly. Once you get everything set, it's really important that you let this dry, otherwise you're going to have the frame askew and it won't work. Here are the top and bottom pieces of one of the doors, and there are two doors. So again, I only filmed me doing this once, but I had to do it twice. I could have printed this all as one piece, but I wanted to do it this way because it actually saved me time to have some of the door be hollow. Just to be extra safe, I waited a few hours for all this stuff to dry. Like I said before, the full cure for this is 12 hours, but normally after 30 minutes it really solidifies, so two to three hours should be enough time for you to be able to assemble the rest of this together. Just like the previous step, it's really important to get this right, and actually I would glue the bottom and the top at the same time, which I didn't do. It just makes things a lot easier, so that's something that you may be able to do when you put this together. 
Here's what happens if you don't glue them all at the same time, which is a bit annoying. You have to kind of finesse this to get the glue underneath the gaps without breaking the PLA. And uh, just something that I think next time I would definitely advise against doing what I'm doing here and just glue it all at the same time. So now this is solid in place and I can show you guys the doors slide open and closed with a little bit of effort. And our floor pieces are also one piece now so I can put them. Remember those metallic panels that we painted earlier? Well now it's time to actually glue those into place. There are four of these total, two on the front and two on the back. And the only one that's really important to pay attention to is the one that has the little keypad is supposed to go in the left side of the front of the diorama. Once those are fully dried, it's time to add in a little bit of color on these knobs and modules that we have on the diorama. I'm just using a fine tip brush and some cheap acrylic paints to apply red and black to the different buttons on the dial. When you're doing this, just try to be as careful as possible and focus as much as you can. I also want to paint these circular portions and I'm going to use, I think it's a royal blue for this. And again, using that fine tip brush, I want to be super careful because I really don't want to smudge any of the silver where we don't have that raised circular portion. I don't want this diorama to appear like it's brand new and I wanted to add some subtle weathering. So originally I thought the best way to do that would be just doing some light dry brushing in the areas where like dirt would accumulate on the floor, on the bottom parts of the panel and in the crevices around the paneling. But it was just taking an incredibly long time to get the effect that I wanted and it honestly wasn't looking the way that I wanted it to. So I decided to adjust my approach and utilize my airbrush which sped things up and I think really added a good look to this piece, added a lot more realism to the metal paneling that we have on the front of the diorama. Now I will say that I definitely had some clogging issues because I wasn't using the highest quality paints in my airbrush, so that did slow me down a bit, but in the end it turned out the way that I wanted. As I was doing this, I decided I wanted to add some of the black to the doors as well, especially along where the doors interlock and also right around the edging of the frame and the threshold. I think that that's a logical place for some dirt to accumulate, and I think it adds to the look of the piece with the shading. For a long time, I was really hesitant to use my airbrush. I had it for a while before I started using it. I don't know why, but I was really intimidated by it. And I have to say, since I started using it and I understand what to do with it, it's just so freeing and it's such a great tool to be able to use. Originally, I also wanted to airbrush the floor pieces, but honestly, after I had broken down my setup, I just figured, hey, it can, I can get a similar effect with dry brushing. It's not going to take me long. These are small pieces, so I just decided to go ahead and dry brush it. And all I did here was use some black Anita's paint to dry brush on the dirt and debris. You could also add some rust. You could add some dirt, but I opted not to. You know, I've made hundreds of diorama components in 3D software that I've used in my dioramas, but I've never done a fully 3D printed diorama until today. And I really want to thank you for checking this out and going on that journey with me. I hope that some of you will continue on that journey, get the STL files, print the diorama yourself, and let me know what you think. If there's any improvements you think I can make, or if you'd like me to make other things like this in the future, 3D printed dioramas that STL files are available for, leave me a comment and let me know. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. I hope I'll see you in the next one.